in the meanwhile, you can meditate. My thoughts are, is the minute finished? Is the minute finished? Is the minute Wait, finished? Is that's not minute? meditating, Hashem. <laughs> it, should be, it should be blank, nothing. Okay. It's, okay. It's, it's not, you just feel your breathing, that's feel good. your brains doing this. That's meditating, that is the minute, is the minute. Before we start, I want, to be, I want you to be comfortable. Do you want me to wear my beanie or take off my beanie? Whatever you feel comfortable with. You are, you are an open-minded, democratic person. Exactly. So, off of the beanie. Okay, so how did this start? So uh, uh, when in my usual day-to-day uh, -day and you know social situations, when or not just day-to-day, -day, when we are, we're like good events or going camping or whatnot, and I get to uh, to talk to people, I just keep you know my way of connecting with people is asking them you know some questions, and you know people told me like these are kind of here, like this is kind of strange, and they found it a bit odd at the same time. Uh, kind of like hmm, refreshing, like something new and something, you know, um, more authentic, I guess, than, than the usual small talk and uh, the BS and all of that stuff. So I was like, okay, let's do this. Uh, let me provide this as a service or like not just service, like not, not I mean, service implies money. Uh, let me provide this as, yeah, service, service without money, I guess. Uh, so it started on, uh, uh, so I was, you know, Kind of connecting with people, and I wanted. There's an issue of collaboration when you like meet somebody or like uh, online, and you want to do something. You like them, but you want to do something with them, but you don't know what. You just like there's a chemistry between you and the person, but there's like, okay, what should we do? So I was like, okay, when I meet somebody, I, uh, you know, we want. I want to collaborate with. Let's let's just suggest the issue of uh, uh, asking the weird questions. Uh, and uh, let's do that. And I started that uh, on my brain as well uh, uh, with Yoka and Yoka seemed to enjoy it. So I was like, okay, let's, let's do it. So uh, here, we, here, here we are now with, uh, with Perry, the first uh, live um, edition. Live edition, not on LinkedIn because it's so complicated on LinkedIn. It's live on Facebook, much easier. And I will share the recording on LinkedIn later on. And on but, YouTube. But Mark Zuckerberg is evil. Okay, ask me the questions. Okay. Bring them on. Okay. So, Perry, Perry Knocker, first of all, okay, let's start with this. What does Perry mean? Sorry? What does Perry mean? Nothing. It doesn't, no, of course it means something, but you just don't. No. It means nothing. So it's everything. Perry means everything. It's nothing. Perry is just a name. There is, I think my parents called me Perry because they liked the singer Perry Como, and that's it. There is no profound, interesting meaning behind Perry as mighty nonlinear thinker or amazing artist or loving and caring person. Perry doesn't mean anything. But I, I'm not asking you what is your meaning of Perry. I'm asking you the name itself. Do you know its origin? How did it come about? It's, it, it doesn't. No, I don't know. So I don't think it has an origin. I don't think it's, it means anything. I've never okay. checked it. Okay. The second question, Knoppert. I'm still kind of like fascinated by the by the uh, by the fact that the K is pronounced like because in English you say I know you don't say I know. Uh, yeah. So why do you think the uh, why do you think the the K got dropped in English? Hmm. 
Why is the K dropped in English? You're asking a Dutch dude who pronounced his name with a K, Knoppert. And the English people say Knoppert. And they ignore the K when it starts with the K. Yeah, when there's K and they don't say the K. No, but you, you, you have to ask them, not me. I don't know. Okay, that's fine. I think the explanation is that, you know, the historical explanation is in the original language, these KN were pronounced, but then, then as they were transmitted in English, the English, you know, they, they found it hard to pronounce, they just stopped it. Anyways, um, so, Perry Knoppert. Uh, what is your earliest memory? What is the first thing you remember in your life? I think I, I know for sure I had a wooden bridge when I was like three years old. And the only thing the wooden bridge as a toy did was open and close with a little rope and a beat on it. And you can pull the rope and then the bridge would open. I think that's my earliest memory. It's not very exciting, but when, when I go back quickly in my memory, that's, that's as far as I go. So that's three years old. How old were you? Oh, three years, three years old. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. something uh, like that. So I, I was living in The Hague and I can see my room, which was painted yellow um, and, and the bridge is there. And then when I start thinking about that, more and more details are coming. But my first thought was that bridge. All right, that's cool. So speaking of memory, I talked, uh, this is continuing a conversation that I had with you yesterday, which, uh, which, is, uh, which I found very, very interesting, is that, that you, you use and abuse the word linear and non-linear a lot, right? You say it a lot, more than you're like, you say it more than good morning and hi, uh, linear and nonlinear. But at the same time, you can't remember what is the source of this word. Like I asked you, was it Emily? I asked you, was it Emily Wapnick? And it's like, no, it's not Emily Wapnick. So you remember trajectory with the multi-potentialized, the uh, uh, smooth things of that sort. But you don't remember how did this word come about? Why do you think that that is? Probably because it's really um, authentic and, and, and it's, it's my creation. Of course, it's not my creation. Nonlinear thinking has always existed and other people are using it. But for me to use the word multipotentiality, it's very clear when I started to use that is because I saw the Emily Wapnick presentation on TED Talk. It's clear. Mm -hmm. The word scanner, the first time I read it in the book of Barbara Sher, right. clear. So I think, and, and creating the octopus movement, very clear, talking to Christine and Haley on Clubhouse, very clear, because it was their thoughts that I've heard and I used. And I asked Christine as well when she said, I use the octopus emoji a lot i asked her are you okay if if i use that idea of the octopus to create the octopus movement so those events are very clear because it's it's inspired by something else by someone else and i think using linear non-linear thinking is not clear because it just popped up in my mind to explain the difference between being a multipotentialite and, and a neurodivergent and thinking differently, I thought that sounds like nonlinear thinking. So 
that's why I can't remember when I started to use that work or where it's coming from because it came from myself. Right. I didn't create the word, of course not, but it's, it's just, I started using it myself in this relationship. Do you have a preference in terms of using, uh, when do you use this word versus using other words like multi-potentialite and all that stuff? There is only one word, it's nonlinear thinking because it covers everything. And multi-potentiality doesn't cover everything. And I think it's more fair to, to talk about nonlinear thinking because everybody has nonlinear thinking in them. And not everybody is a multipotentialite, but everybody is somewhere, somehow a nonlinear thinker. Okay. Do you think, do, would you like to do, to do I mean, obviously, would like to do sometimes. Um, do you do you see yourself as establishing a new model alongside all of these previous things, uh, multiple potentiality and uh, all of that stuff? Something new as, or do you see yourself as just an extension of those things? I think it's already a new model. I think it's already uh, it's already there, right? Yeah, I guess I'm, what I'm asking, which is a kind of reflects my way of thinking, is like you have to write a book about it, and it, you know it has to be like go through the 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 textual academic path, which is reflects again my way of thinking, not not necessarily the 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 way to do it to me. Uh, so yeah, scratch that question. It's it's already there, Hashem. So right. it it will be a book, but when the book is there, it's only the idea coming onto paper and words. It's not that when there is a book, the idea is born. The idea is now here. Right. It's, it's, it's clear for me. I use it every day. A lot of people see it, use it as well, the nonlinear thinking. So it's already there. Okay. And it just needs time to be in the book so everybody can read about it. But it has already started. It's already yeah. here. Right, right, right. Uh, so tell me the last time or one time that you laughed so hard you almost peed yourself. I, I have that a lot. So um... maybe you have a weak bladder. No, well, I don't pee myself that easily when I'm laughing, but I can laugh and, and sincerely have a lot of fun. And, yeah. and, and maybe you're asking me for examples, but laughing is when I meet a group of people on Zoom and, and we're having fun and I can really laugh. And, but also with my children, we have very interesting conversations at the breakfast table or at the dinner table. And my kids are really a lot of fun. They're 10, 14, and 16. So it's, <clears throat> you know, the ideas that are there, and it's, it's very nonlinear. Sorry, I use the word again, Hasha, but it's very nonlinear in, our, in my household. So everything is possible, and we can say all kinds of things. And, and it's, it's hilarious, you know, it's, it's, and I can't even give you the example, but oh my God, it's, it's laughing a lot. And same with my girlfriend, Irma, you know, we can laugh so hard and, and we can have so much fun. So uh, last time I laughed really hard, maybe three days ago. Right, right, right. Speaking of your family, Who's your favorite child? <laughs> I always hate it when people say, I don't have a favorite child because I'm always thinking that's not true. But you do have a favorite child in all of them. Right. So it's, 
it's a favorite child in in different aspects and it's right. it's beautiful to see your own dna and your wife's and the mother's dna into in your children and their authenticity that they created themselves so right. you're enjoying i have three kids i'm enjoying all three of them in their special way so my favorite child is every single one of them not equally but from the favorite children my youngest is my favorite child from the middle children my middle one is my favorite child and from the oldest ones my oldest is my favorite child so right. does that answer your question it's it's a bit you know it's not just oh i i love them all because i do but there are differences and within the differences they're all my favorite child right 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 right, right. uh okay so if you had the chance to con uh, to facilitate a conversation between any two people on in this world which two pe pe people would you uh, choose? I would love to have two people meeting each other that are completely opposite. Opposite, not only in their thinking, but in their living, in, in their being. And right. I think that's the most beautiful, beautiful thing. And already, and I use the word nonlinear thinking a lot, but I also use the words pick my brain a lot. I think the platform of pick my brain is helping on that perspective. I think it's beautiful when two people meet that are totally different and right. whoever it is it doesn't matter to me but and i see that in project 398 the book with 398 nonlinear thinkers together right. when as a reader you will read that book this year you will read these stories from people all over the world and you will connect with these people all over the world right. which is which is so valuable. It gives you so much insight because we are so limited in our little bubble of our life right. that we think we know it all and we don't know a thing. And by reaching out to others and, and, and listening to others, it creates so much more for yourself. Right. That's beautiful. So who do I want to be in touch? I, I, I want people that are very different. So a, a, a Western career person with a lot of money, with a local farmer in Africa who is very happy. You know, these two people meeting that they would never meet normally. And then they meet and, and something beautiful will happen. Okay, That's what I would like. I, I'm going to press you further. I want examples. So in order to nudge you a bit, think of maybe perhaps people who have already met uh, throughout your life, but in different contexts that you want, want them to uh, talk to each other. So you, you, you lived in China. I, mean, I don't know if you went to the rural areas, maybe someone like a rural farm, farmer in China. Who would you like? And, and you also had a corporate background back in the Netherlands. So maybe like an example would be somebody from rural China with a with a with a marketing guy in the Netherlands. That but but I I, know, I I want specific people. So if you can take a minute to think of specific people, it needs contrast. So I'm a photographer. I love contrast. I I I, I adore contrast. So in this example, it's also contrast. I, in China, if you, if you want an example for China, um, I had a driver in, in China, Li Yanbin. He was amazing. 
such a loving and caring and beautiful person. And my ex-girlfriend, I want her to meet him. I want my ex-girlfriend to meet my ex-driver. Mm. I tell you why. My ex-girlfriend is a teacher at school and, and she taught also social studies. Right. And she saw China from a book, from history. So her knowledge about China was right. purely based on hearsay of others printed on paper with ink. Right. And that's it. And that was the reality that that is the reality for her. My reality yeah. of China is not a book, is not ink. My reality of China is Li Yanbin, who is a Chinese person that I spent three and a half years with every day. And I got right. to know him very well. I went to have tea like this with a teacup like this, very Chinese. There is green tea here and then you press and it goes here. Anyway, um, I went to have tea with his mother. I went to see his family. We spent so much time together. For me, he is China and, and not a book. And my ex-girlfriend has a lot of judgment about China, the culture and the people. And, and she's teaching about this to children. So I would love to have her meeting my previous driver to get more of a real story of China. Right, right. That's a beautiful answer. Does she have a, a, a personal experience with Chinese people in, in Holland? Um, one time, a good friend of mine from China came to visit me in Brussels. And we went out for dinner. And my ex-girlfriend went with us. And it takes some time, Hashem, for someone who thinks in a linear way to break that linear thought line and to right. see other things. And my experience is that just a dinner doesn't do the trick. So right. it takes more time than just one conversation to really see and really feel more on what's happening. Because what happened during dinner is that she was trying to present her thoughts about China, about his country, to him based on books. And, and she was trying to find acknowledgement from him, right. proving she is right. So it takes a little bit more time than just one dinner for someone to have a different opinion. Right, right, right. Um, ooh. Is there something that you want to say somewhat to someone but you haven't said? No. Okay. That's a good place to be. I think, you know, not a lot of people, I mean, yeah, I guess because of the way your personality, because you're so open, you're in the privileged position where like you don't, you didn't hide anything. Uh, I, if, if I want to say something, I say it. The only problem is that not everybody is listening. Right. So if the question was, who would you like to have listened better Listen. to you? Right. Then I have a whole list of people. Right. Um, Anything that, that, are, can... that are not listening carefully. They hear me, but they're not listening. OK. Uh, right, that's the tricky part of a, uh, of, a, of a live streaming, like, should I ask, are there anyone, uh, you know, to give us more details or, 
skip that. Let's let's go move to the next question. Uh, okay. okay. Is there someone you're friends with now that you did not expect to be friends with at all? That's a very unusual question. Now that's me. Because how could you ask this to a nonlinear thinker to have expectations in friendships whatsoever? Okay, let I'm, me... I'm not expecting anything regards to connections to others or friendships. So when you ask me this, I'm thinking it's very unusual because I don't expect anything to happen regarding to friendships. Right. Okay. So let me ask you this way. Is there somebody you're friends with now where your first interaction was a negative one? No, I used to have that in the past, but I took the decision not to convince people anymore. So I think in the past, I, I could have answered that question saying, oh yes, you know, in the first meeting with that person, it didn't go so well, but I convinced him to work together and then we ended up being friends. But I'm not doing that anymore. It's happening or it's not happening. So it's, it's, no, I'm sorry, no. Why, why was there a transition from? You know, because I discovered when you convince people, in the end, it never works in my experience when you in when you have to convince someone to work with you or when you have to convince someone to be with you mm. then the starting point is is not good and and you're you're in a way behind schedule when you do that so if I need to convince you to talk to me, then if there is a moment where you have doubts about me, you yeah. will go back immediately to that period of time where you had to be convinced and you say to yourself immediately, you see, I shouldn't have trust him. You see, he's no good. You see, it's not working. So I find that a waste of time. I don't want to convince people. Either it works or it doesn't work. Either it's we get along perfectly immediately without any doubt, or it doesn't work. Right. So, okay, so this is interesting because it ties into my next question, which is, have you ever, uh, not have you ever, when was the last time you changed your mind on something major? Like you had one opinion, one belief, then you switched that belief or you, you know, adjusted it. I think that's all the time. If, if you switch your belief, then it is a linear process. So, you're, you're having expectations and you need to adjust. When you are a nonlinear thinker, you're constantly adjusting. So changing your mind is a very linear process in a way because mm -hmm. you decide to go from A to B to C to D, but when you're at D, You have doubts if E if the, is if if that's the right step after D. 
mm. when you are non-linear, you're constantly adjusting towards the flow that you want to be in. What's the, 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 I mean, on the positive side, of course, you know, you always have to, I mean, okay, scratch that. What's the negative uh, aspect of that? Not. There's no negative aspect? No. You find that other people are, you, you don't find that other people are um, disturbed by a constant changing? I'm not constant changing. I'm, um, some people don't understand. I'm not constantly changing. I'm doing what I, what I want to do, what I need to do, and what I do with the octopus movement, with my constantly nonlinear and linear thinking, explaining this. Um, some people are annoyed because they want more structure. They want me to behave in a linear way because that suits themselves better because they are thinking in a linear way. And well, you know, that, that doesn't work then. Probably later it will. Okay. Okay. So the next question is, I'm going to ask you the next question, but I want you to answer first in Chinese. Yeah. Yes. Then in English. Okay. Uh, let's choose. Uh, ooh. In case of fire. Okay. What would you take with you? There, there's a fire happening. What is the first thing that you, you, you want to save from your uh, house? My children. Yeah, of course. But other than, let's assume the children are not there. Uh, but again, material. So material, you mean? Yeah. My, my dog, sure. but that's also not fair. So what is it that I will take with me? Chinese. Uh, uh, Mandarin. Yeah, yeah. If I know the word in Mandarin. Um, we'll butcher now. We'll book him and shall. We'll butcher now. Okay, Dutch. Um, ik weet het niet en ik, um, ik maak geen grapje. I want to guess this. Say that again, the Dutch one. Ik weet het niet en ik maak geen grapje. Oh, wow. I don't know. Uh, okay, in English? I have no clue, and I'm not joking. I don't know. I don't have anything I want to take with me, as long as my kids and my dog. And it, material? No. How about your computer? No, it's in the cloud. Burn the laptop. I'm okay with that. Okay. Um... How uh, about uh, if you look, go on an island, what would it? Okay, the same question, I guess, in the island. So, okay, skip the, skip the island question. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh... Ooh, when is the last time you got, got emotional goosebumps? Again, Chinese, Dutch. Um, I don't know how to say that in Chinese. Okay. First of all, first of all, uh, emotional goosebumps. So that's goosebumps because of an emotional reaction. Right. I. What I think about is is goosebumps in my brain. Have you ever had that, Hashim? Uh, say more. So you can feel you can have goosebumps in your brain. And it happens when um, you have an orgasm. Right. 
that's for me that's emotional goosebumps when you have a orgasm and it and it happens in your brain not in your genitals or whatever but in your brain i call that intellectual euphoria yeah but do you have that during sex no uh, you you have that during sex of course uh, okay no i was thinking of something else i was thinking of uh like when something clicks on like on an intellectual level there's this immense joy that you're having but say that's what you see here i have that all the time but that doesn't do the the goosebumps in my in my brain that's just a good feeling like oh yeah and when you see the connection when when the connection hits when you make a connection with something or you see something or you or all, all of a sudden you have an epiphany a right. thought you write down you're like oh that's it that's a good feeling but that's not the intense goosebumps that you can have in your brain okay tell me when when was the last time or a time when that happened what the, the brain goosebumps the last time i had that I, when when i make love i have that a lot of times okay it's it's wonderful and it's it and it's only possible when you're really connected and and when you're really purely connected and not thinking about oh shit you know um i have to last longer or i need to do this or i need to do that when you're really connected and nothing matters and you're in 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 the trend of of meditation and there's nothing except right. that connection then it's there how about the intellectual euphoria that the, when when what thought clicks like this you said you all you all, you always have it but uh, i have uh, that every day it's and, and there, have... there's more intense moments where like eureka when i read a book when i listen to music when i'm when i listen to others i have I need to show that to you. Since recently, I'm writing these things down when I have a click. These are the clicks. I'm writing them all down when I have a click on all the cards. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Right? And sometimes I post them. Right. So when you finish when we finish the uh, the podcast or whatever i want to see some uh, post some some images of them some of them on the octus movement i want to see some of them this is very cool i i just created this one i made a poll an this artist. morning i'm an artist because the thought of being an artist is interesting right when you consider yourself an artist something happens so there's a definition of an artist when are you an artist and that's the beauty of art there is no definition of art right right so i am an artist is wonderful because there is no definition of art and when you consider yourself an artist it means you're doing more than just what you need to do right so whatever is more is an art and you can be an artist in everything so if you are an entrepreneur you can be an artist creating your company you can be an artist in being a father and consider that as an art to do your best you can be an artist in 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 being a lover you can right. be an artist in living by itself in being alive and being in the moment and being completely aware so your awareness can be an art as well so i'm an artist was a connection i made one day and like that's very powerful when you are an artist and when you consider yourself to be an artist in whatever way because there's nobody can say to you you're not an artist right 
Right, right. It's a beautiful word. And and that connection was made yesterday or this morning, I don't remember even. And I, and I think about it, I'm like, oh, write it down. And I, I have these cards everywhere. They're, they're here, they're everywhere. And right. these are these connections that I'm enjoying. Let's go to the uh, comments that people have. The, the, the... Let's see if there are any questions that we need to answer there. So I think uh, uh, Brenda asked, um, would you rather live alone or die with the group? Brenda's asking, would you rather live alone or die with the group? Right, yeah. Both. It, this question, it means that I would be afraid to die. And then there is a, a, a relationship rather being in a group. So finding it important to be with a group and paying the price with dying or living alone, it's, it's the same thing. So I cannot choose between that. I'm, I'm not afraid to die. Living and dying is the same thing in the end, right? If, if, if we don't live, we cannot die. And if we cannot die, we cannot live. So I, I can choose between those. Okay. Uh, Another question. Let me just check out the other question. Yeah, there's something. Uh, okay, just a sec. Check, check. You can also check the, uh, the Facebook group. Uh, what is the weird dream? Gloria is asking, what is a weird dream? I, I, I recently had a weird dream. Um, oh, I forgot. That's a good one. I need to think about that. I, I, told, I told Irma about that. And I said, oh, I have a weird dream. I wake up. I have that sometimes. And I wake up and I'm like, listen, this was a weird dream. And I'm laughing about the weirdness of the dream. But I, I can't remember. Hmm. Sorry, Gloria. I don't remember. Well, Patty, uh, I can't. I only can see the last four comments. Is that part of the stream? That's that's the way it, it goes? Or can you see the previous comments as well? I don't know. I see the live chat and I see Brenda Stevens doing this as the, as the last comment one minute ago. Okay. Uh, there's 24 comments for some reason that you can just see four. Mm, that's strange. Um, Any more questions? So, so now a question to the people that are in the, in the live chat. Um, should we do this more often? That's a, such a leading question, Perry. Well, maybe people will say no, please. Shut but the are, fuck up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you need some Dutch people to say that. Yeah, they're very direct. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's just do it again next week. It's fun. I like yeah. it. But I think we just we should do it with, uh, you know, different people. Because, uh, you know, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it later. But uh, I want to you ask see? a question in Arabic. Okay, I'm okay. not explain it in English. I just want to, to guess what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. Go for it. ما هي أغرب رسالة وص وصلتك وصلتك What was your biggest mistake? Is that the question? No, but but answer I uh, sorry, the, the connection dropped. Should I answer it anyway? What what is sec? I was guessing what you were asking, and my guess was you're asking me what is your biggest mistake. But that that's not the question you asked in a No, but you can answer whatever you want. 
My biggest mistake was to convince people. Right. So the question was, what was the strangest message that you got? The strangest message that I get is when I have the idea people really have no clue what I'm talking about. So when there is a message saying, I'm doing something that I'm definitely not doing, that I find very strange because I'm wondering, where is this coming from, this idea? And I find that a strange message. Right. And I sometimes get that. I get a lot of messages and it's it's 99% very positive. And it's, it's, it's so sweet to get these personal messages and it's so kind and it's wonderful. And sometimes I get a message that I'm thinking, you should have a conversation with me because you have no clue who I am and what I'm standing for. And you're saying something now which is completely the opposite and says more about yourself than about me. And that's, that I find strange messages. Right. Um, okay. That was cool. So let's end. Cool. I'm thinking either we can end it here or, oh yeah, let's end it here. I was just thinking we can send, we have this format at the end, you can ask me one question. Oh. And we have the last question. What's your biggest fear? Pain. My biggest fear is pain, whether physical or emotional. Anything of anything that, that, that I'm just very sensitive to pain. So that's, this is my answer and we need to that. Okay. Thanks, Hashem. Hashem, thank you. Hashem, thank you. All right, so thank people, you. Please, please let us know what you thought about the, uh, the session. The good things and the bad things, we're not just fishing for compliments. We want to improve it for the future. So just tell us the bad things as well. If you are too, too shy to do that, Ask so that Dutch person to, uh, that you know to, to tell us. Just tell them the bad things and the Dutch person will tell us. Okay? Yalla. Yalla. Right. Yalla. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Ashen. Bye, everybody.